Let's make pop-up pockets from folding paper bags. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today we're having a look at our paper bags, things that we would probably throw away. The paper bags come in lots of different varieties. You may have things like this from a gift shop and they have the rectangle bottom. So when they pop up, they look like that, something to put a gift in or sweets a sweetie bag, that sort of thing. This came from a craft supply shop in the UK here in London and there you can see it's got the rectangular fold. So sandwich bags, gift bags, those are the bags that we're looking for that have this folded rectangular bottom to them. And this is the one that I've got here. I think this is an old coffee or flower bag, something that uh, comes from a place where you can go and have things refilled. And this was that. So I had a couple of bags. And um, I think the lady even gave me some bags when I asked for them. So people are really accommodating if you say that you're doing a craft project, particularly if um, some have got a stain or they're damaged and they're then they're going free. So this was a free bag. And as you can see, it does the pop-up element there. I've got a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper here. This comes from a paper pack by Stamperia and it's called Wonderland. And this is the paper pack that I'm working from. It's quite an old one. I've had it in my stash for a long time. I've obviously been hoarding it, but now is the time to start using these things. So it is a 190 gram paper weight and it's quite a flexible card. So it's not too thick, not too thin. It's quite perfect for this project, but the thinner the better. So actually I think digital kits would work even better than using our paper packs but it is for the purpose of using up what we have and this is what I have to hand today but I will have a look at digital kits as well so that I can use photocopy paper weight and that will allow this to remain a thinner project. So just so you can see what we're aiming for today this is part of our Build a Journal project and this is the October project. So what we're doing is pop-up pockets or pop-up boxes and this was the one that I've created as my example. On the outside I've done a vintage collage using vintage finds. I've got paper here from an old atlas. You can see we've got East Africa depicted on the front here. I've used a die cut from Tim Holtz and on the back is this very old vintage atlas page. And I've put the colours in here to look like an agripanthus, a African lily. And here I've got some labels from Klee Black Creations, summer labels. I've got an old stamp and then a tab top with an eyelet and a sentiment. So embrace the journey. And what I wanted for these pop-up pockets or boxes is when you open it up, you're transported to somewhere else, somewhere a little bit more exciting. And that's why we're going to be using the fairy on the next one because it's this one is going to open up and we'll see the fairy inside. So as you can see here, we are off to Africa with the Serengeti and all the animals inside and that was just really good fun to do and that came out of a 12 by 12 paper pack also from Stamperia which is the Savannah paper pack so that is really really lovely and I've put some old stamps in there we've got a Ugandan stamp and some very very old vintage paper stamps in there and then it's decorative on all the sides as it goes around and does this wonderful pop-up. Now because this paper has a strength to it, it does stay up when it's open and if we just manipulate it so that it remains open, it could stay on your craft desk and be your scrap box. It could be where you throw your odds and ends, your little bits of cotton perhaps, by the sewing machine. So these are really fun to make. And then you can just flatten them down and tidy them away and put that in the drawer. And it's just lovely. It can be a really decorative 
piece that you have on your craft desk if you don't want to gift it or put it in a journal. Um, the idea is that that would glue down into the page of a journal and then you'd have this fun pop-up element here with something else inside. And that could be a booklet, it could be um, a, a card, a journaling card, it could be a tag, anything, anything your imagination wants could go inside there. So they're really, really fun. And I think that they are lovely to give away. Uh, to other people as well. If you want to decorate them with a theme that you know the other person likes, how fun is that to gift over the holidays when you want to deliver something to that other person in your life? Really, really fun. So nice place to add tickets or uh, a gift card, anything, you know, really good idea. So that's what we're doing. So once you've cut the long bit off and you're left with this piece, this is the piece that you can either back with some more card or some coffee paper and you would be able to have that as a writing space and this could be a floating pocket or it could be stuck down in the journal. And the measurements here are 18 centimetres by 10 and a half centimetres which is 7 inches by 4 inches and that's the measurement there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my piece of paper here so I can see roughly where the fairy will come and live and I want to make sure she's got a border at the top and the bottom so I don't want it up there um, and have a great big thing there. I would like her to be sort of central so we get a bit at the bottom, a bit at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around the image that I want to put in the bottom. This could come from anywhere, it could be from a cutout from a book. I'm going to use the Frixon Pilot Pen. This is where the ink disappears when it's heated and it's just a really good idea to then draw round where I want to be with it and then I'm going to cut out my image now as I said this ink disappears you could use pencil and rub that out at the end Okay, so now we've got the fairy image. Uh, we can look at it and if there's anything that we want to do to further decorate that image, you could do that. We could even put some 3D pearls onto the beads that look like they're trailing off of her dress. Something yeah. like her stickles, you could dab those on and add some little extra embellishments, that's all possible. So for the purpose of this, let's just show you how to assemble it. We would be checking that we've got the right fit and then what what I'll do is just add stick glue to this and I'm using the Yoohoo glue and going all the way over this a nice slick of glue and in she goes and now just make sure that this is now folding shut and that she's gone in there properly give it a smooth over with the bone folder and actually really make sure that we've got some nice crisp edges here so that the pop-up happens when we pull the top part and up that comes. So there we go, that's the first one in. Now we've got our fairy in there, I want to line the inside on this larger panel, so that's the other side of our front. I'm taking the next section by just measuring it out again and then cutting that away and we're going to add that into this bit here. So I've just inked round there, that looks really nice. I'm just using Pumice Stone by Tim Holtz Distress Ink and that's a nice colour there. Just takes away the white edge and then this can be slotted in here. We'll just glue this one into position and then we just slot this one in and stick that down smooth out any creases and really make sure that that is stuck down. Because I cut that freehand with the scissors it's not as straight as it could be so we might just put that under the guillotine and straighten that up in a minute but let's have a look. Yeah so it wants probably a trim on the top there and make sure that that's going to sit in nicely and we'll just look at what we've got left to play with. 
So I'm wanting to do the other side of those two portions there. So we'll just see how much we've got. I think that's going to be fine, but it's going to leave a gap. So I'll just take the remaining bit here and cut it here. And then I'm left with those strips to play with. And then we'll go with that. Okay, I'm inking around to give a nice finished edge all the way around. And then I'm going to glue these on again. So we just put the stick glue all away around there. And then the same for this one. All right, so I've glued around both pieces there now and I'm going to put my wider piece in at the bottom, making sure that it goes round the right way so that I've got the lettering down here matching up. I'll just slot that in. Okay, so that bit's in. And then and then just smooth that down with the bone folder. Okay, and then we'll add this bit. And again, making sure we've got it round the right way and just adding this piece next to it, but allowing for the crease. So we've got to leave a section for the fold to take place. All right, here we are. So when you stick your two panels in here, you've got to make sure that you've allowed for the fold. So leave a little gap. And then what you can do is take your ink and just come in and just take away some of that brown and just give it a little bit of an inked edge. That just adds to the aging effect, a little bit of vintage char and then just smooth it out as you go make sure everything is laying flat and nice and smooth and sticking well and on this one I've got a big gap there but that's okay because we'll just embellish that with something else whether it's a fabric or a washi tape or even a bit more of the decorative paper I had the same situation with this one here and what I did is I added more of the decorative paper onto that little bit there and that gave a nice interesting edge. But to avoid some of the bolt, it may be best to use a different paper or even to decoupage some napkin onto those bits which would be thinner so you can reduce the bulk. Um, that's another idea. Or alternatively you could paint it. So we've now done the inside looking really smart and as it folds over we've got this bit here. Now what I'm going to do is decorate this part here in this script paper. I might leave the top bit free of this card just because I think that will reduce some of the bulk. Where I've added where I've added some decorative paper all the way round and particularly in there it has added bulk as it folds so that's something to be mindful of so I just want to see what it's like without adding the paper on the inside and maybe coming up with another idea. Okay now this little strip if I get it straight could come and live here and just be that extra bit that attaches onto there. All right, I've just used art glitter glue with a precision nib there so that I can take this off cut strip and add it into my side bit here where we were just lacking a bit of length. So I'm going to put that in there and cover up that bit down the side. There we go, so that's taken care of that bit with a little off cut. And now we can decorate this edge here. Okay, that's great. Uh, 
Okay, so now I'm left with this long strip and this piece here and we've got to come up with an idea to decorate the front without giving away the fact that it's got a fun fairy inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down there with the guillotine just to get a nice straight edge and I'm also going to probably take away maybe just like a... I'm just going to take away a tiny bit. I quite like to see this bit peeping through. Okay, so let's have a look at an idea to decorate this and we can see whether we could just line it along the bottom, that might be a nice idea. So what I'll do is cut that down to size here and make a mark there and cut my next piece. So I've got that and then I'm going to do the same again here, just measuring it roughly, very loose. Make a mark there and then cut that off and then hopefully what I've got left will also give me a length across there. Look, it works out perfectly. So that's really good. So I've got three pieces here and then I can turn them any which way I like because it doesn't matter. But what I had I what I just sort of thought might be a nice idea is doing um, an overlapping of pockets. And what I'll do is put some thumb holes in so that it looks a little bit more like it's meant to be a pocket. So we're going about halfway, not quite halfway, and just do a little dip like that in all three of the cards that have come off of this. Just working with the scraps you end up with really, anything goes. And then we'll take the ink and we'll go around and take away any of that. And I can just run my heat tool over that purple line where I've got the ink from the pen. So do that all the way around. You could cut these out of any scraps to make this idea of a pocket. It doesn't have to be that you've worked with a 12 by 12. It doesn't have to be the same. It could be completely different. So just so you know the measurements of these pieces, I have ended up with a 10 centimetre, which is four inches, because it's got to fit onto the, the top there. So, so four inches, 10 centimetres, by six and a half centimetres, which is two and a half inches. Now I'm going to have a gap at the top, so I'm going to need this piece as well. And just looking at it, it's slightly shorter than I want, but we might be okay. Okay, so we've got these fun pockets that have appeared on the front here. This one's quite a deep one. This one I kept quite short and this one is the same width as the pocket itself. So there we go, there's three storage areas for ephemera. You can add things like your stamps, you can add journaling cards, tickets, things that you might want to put there and in the future if it's going into a journal then it's a nice place to put cards, receipts, tickets, anything, any places you go and any interesting things that you collect along the way. So here we are, this is the bag, it's looking really smart. I've added some white gesso to the end and that has introduced a really clever way of keeping it thin. So just to show you how I did that I just took my white gesso and I'm just putting a little bit onto the paintbrush. So we just take a little bit and then I'm just going to sweep some along here over that bit there and just add that in and then I can let that dry. So these are the pieces that I've got left to work with and I thought I'd just add a little bit of lace trim down there with this rustic burlap hessian style and I'm just going to add a hope that the art glitter glue will attach it. Um, I'll just put some on and we'll see. 
let the lace overhang at the bottom. Okay, I think it would be quite nice if I could use the entire sheet and these are all the scraps that I've got left. Um, so what I think I will do is I'll use this piece as a tab top as I did before on the example one here and I found a little blue eyelet so I think that will be really sweet and we'll add that on there. I'm not going to do the ribbon that I've done before because I've added this embellished piece down here. I've got the flower, I've got a little label and what I think these are just got three dimensional stickers on them. I'm just pulling that off, it's a bit old and I'm just using that and I think that that looks really cute there and I'll add in that label so that uh, a uh, maybe a month could be added if this was something in a journal or a date. That's quite nice. So I'm going to add some glue to the back of this. I'll just put that in there. And before I push that down, I'm just going to add some on here, front and back. And I'm going to tuck that under there. And then that can flip up. I'm going to add this up here, but I think I want that colour, so I'm going to add that up there, and let's have a look at it, what do we prefer, well maybe the white, maybe the white, maybe a bit of something. Add some glue onto this one and then making sure that I don't get one of the folds, just making sure that it goes there, I'm going to add that on. And then a little piece of rag ribbon and I'm going to punch through and just capture that in. Using my hole punch here for the crocodile. Alright, I'm just punching a hole in the centre of that, about there. And then I think I'll add this wispy piece of fabric. And just push in the eyelet. And then I can squash that in. No, I've gone through the other. Okay, and I've gone through to the wrong piece there, so that is not cool. So what we'll do is we'll just pull it off gently. Okay, and we'll just repair that top bit with something like a washi tape. And we'll just make a repair with washi tape, I like that. And so that's how that's looking, it's looking quite fun. I've also got this little butterfly here. This is from Tim Holt's Field Notes Snippets. I will just going to add that one on there. Okay, so we've got a little green butterfly there, which is really sweet. And then we open it up here. Up pops our pocket. And there is the fairy with a little green butterfly. So that links in. That's quite fun. I think that it's a bit plain here. So what I'm going to do is use this final piece that came off of the 12 by 12 pack. I'm going to just put a touch of glue on both ends and create a belly band. I'm going to add it in here because now I'll be able to tuck a little piece of paper or a journaling card or a tag or anything really. Just make sure that I get it straight and that's how that's going to look. And then I think I've got this little piece of note paper here with some stamping on. 
just some simple pa paper um, I will add that in there for a secret note so that's going to live in there really really cute really functional as well and this could be a pop-up box on the craft table if you wanted to add your scraps no problem at all and I think I just I think that this is the one side that's a little bit too plain for my liking so I think we better just add a bit of corresponding lace trim to this end here so I'll just measure out some and I'm going to add that in there Okay, so let's now add this, but as I do it, I'm going to make sure that the lace is overhanging. And I'm going to have to be very careful when I fold this because it needs to dry because some of the glue will seep through and it will stick to the other side. So I just need to push this up to make sure that we've got a little bit of that lace overhanging. And so when it is closed, when it's closed, we are getting the frill there. I think the lace is quite sweet on this one because you've got the loose fabric of the fairy's dress as it billows out. It's just a gentle little extra embellishment and I think that that all is really quite sweet. And that can come and live in a journal and be a pop-up. It's a really fun happy mail idea to deliver something interesting to somebody and it would be a really good gift as well because you could wrap a little bit of ribbon around it and it just something fun and really functional as well if you wanted to add a little notebook or writing um, tear sheet of paper you could in the bottom you can give them stamps and stickers and all sorts of little embellished things and then of course we've got it looking like this around the side and just adding this yellow butterfly in here as well just to give a little extra on the end of that belly band and that is how it's looking so there is the belly band with a little writing tuck all complete with a butterfly looking really sweet I hope you can see that there's the fairy this bit folds in you can add extra bits down there and you can collage and decorate however you like but it's really fun to just make sure you line it with a really fun image in the bottom of the folding bag and then you will be able to embellish and, and do whatever you want and however you feel you would like to decorate it and these are the fun pop-ups and they are just really super. So the next one I'm going to do is going to have a woodland feel and we'll maybe look at something in a digital kit just to see how that changes maybe the bulk of it because this is a slightly thicker cardstock. So if I use photocopy paper it'll be interesting to see what we come back with. But there we are, that's some more ideas to go away and make these pockets this month. I hope you have fun with it and if you've enjoyed this idea and tutorial do please like and subscribe to the channel you can click the bell icon and be alerted to more videos as and when they come and you will be able to join along with the monthly makes if you so wish and if not you can just make notes and keep that idea in your back pocket so to speak and be able to do something like that in the future so these videos are not going anywhere they are a useful resource for you so do please have a dip into the other playlists and see if you'd like to get some more inspiration from the other videos here at the treasured page in the playlists and you'll be able to find many other tutorials and ideas and inspiration okay guys so I'm going to leave it there we'll come back in the next video we'll have a look at how we can use this idea with a digital kit and we'll also have a look at some parcels that I need to open so above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now. Mm -hmm.